Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going over setting up a basic virtual machine using PowerShell in Azure Resource Manager. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my previous video that goes over setting up the prerequisites, including storage account, network, and resource group. Thanks. I hope you enjoy this and find it informative. All right, let's get started. This is the script I'll be using to create my basic VM. And by basic, I mean a VM with an OS disk and one IP address. Uh, pretty simple setup. I'm using Windows PowerShell ICE to run this. And like the script in my last video, this is meant to be ran section by section interactively. Although you could modify it pretty simply to uh, create a traditional PS1 style script. At the beginning, I have my command to list the variables. That's handy to see what variables are established. I also have a script or a command here to remove the variables. And this is handy if you're running multiple commands and you just want to make sure that any variable that's set is cleared out. The next item I have here is the server name and the IP address. So server name can be pretty much anything you want. Uh, the IP address, I started with .4. That subnet was created in the last video. And uh, dot four is the first usable IP address in that range. Microsoft Azure reserves the first three IP addresses. So I'll run that command. And that's set. So now we move on to the location. Location was set up in the last video as well. I'm just using central US. That matches the location of the resource group and the storage account and the network that I created previously. The next command will set the resource group name. Again, that was created in the last video. But if you want to see your available resource groups, I have the command here that will list the resource groups associated with the subscription you're using. So let's set that. All right, we'll move on to virtual networks. This is going to set the VNet. Again, that was created previously. If you want to see your virtual networks that are available, you can run that command. And that will list the VNet that are available for your subscription. All right, now we're moving on to the subnets. Now we already established our network here. We need to identify what subnet we're using. And the way you do that is by running this command if you have more than one subnet on that VNet, it's going to list each one. And as the notes say here, the subnet index number is the number of the subnet that's displayed from the output of this command, numbering them consecutively from left to right starting with zero. So this is my first subnet, server subnet, and that is going to be subnet index number zero. It's a little confusing, but that's the way it was created. All right, now we have that established. This command is going to set up the VNet. All right, now we're going to move on to the NIC and the public IP. The first command is going to establish the name of the NIC. The NIC name is going to equal the virtual machine name with the underscore NIC1 appended to the end of it. The public IP name is going to be the virtual machine name with the underscore PIP for public IP one appended to the end of it. Then the next two commands, the first one here is going to set up the public IP address and the second one is going to create the NIC with the static IP address we specified previously. And this could take a minute to run. All right, that finished successfully. So let's move on to the next section, which is the storage account name. Now, if you want to find your storage accounts available, I included the command in the script. That's going to output all the storage account names available for that subscription. And we're using the one created previously. All right, the next command is going to set the virtual machine size. 
Now I have a command here that will list the virtual machines available in your subscription and location. I'm using standard A0, which you can see is one of the smallest VMs available. It's also one of the least expensive VMs available. All right, we're going to move on to the next command. This is going to establish the publication name, the offer name, and the SKU. Now these are three items you need to set up a virtual machine. And what it basically does is say who's offering the image, what's the name of the offer, and what's the SKU or what, what's the actual ID of the item you want to install. I added a command here that will list all the publisher names available with your subscription. I piped it into another command that's going to limit it to just Windows publications. If you want to see all the publications available, you can run the first part of this command. It's going to return a list of all the different publishers publishing images to Azure. Now we'll take and run the entire command, limiting it to just Windows. You can see the publisher we're going to use is Microsoft Windows Server. Next, we're going to take that information and get a list of all the offers that Microsoft Windows Server has available. And you can see the publisher name Microsoft Windows Server has an offer of Windows Server. So we're going to add that. And next we're going to find a SKU. So that's the actual image that's going to be used to build this VM. Those are all of the images available. And for this we're going to pick the 2012 R2 data center. All right, so that concludes most of the variables that we'll need to set up this VM. Now that they're all established, we're going to run this block of code. And it's going to prompt for a username and password. The username cannot be administrator or admin. It has to be something different. Those names are reserved by Microsoft. The password has to contain an uppercase character lowercase character, a numeric digit, and a special character, and be at least eight characters long. All right, there it goes. That's done running. And this last block of code is going to put it all together. It's going to create a, an OS disk with the virtual machine name and the underscore o, OS appended to the end of it. Add it to the storage account we defined. And take care of setting up the rest of the virtual machine. And this will take a couple minutes to run. All right, and there it is. The virtual machine has been created. That can take a few minutes to complete, so don't be alarmed if it takes a while to finish. Now that it's done, let's go over to the portal and see what it looks like. Okay, here we are at the portal. And if we go down to virtual machines, you can see the virtual machine we created is running. Now we can connect to that by clicking on that button. That will open up the remote desktop session. Now you enter in your username and password you set up.
accept the certificate. And you can see I'm logging in now. I'm going to minimize this while it runs through the initial setup because I'm sure everybody has seen a Windows Server 2012 R2 desktop before. Clicking on connect is going to connect you through the public IP address set up on the virtual machine. Something else that I'll point out that's important is this stop button up here. If you're using Azure in a lab or development area and you want to shut down your virtual machines when they're not in use to save some money, you should always use this stop button. If you use the shutdown command in the virtual machine, it will shut down the virtual machine, but Azure won't know that it's not running, so you'll continue to be charged for uh, the CPUs and memory used for that virtual machine. If you click the stop button, Azure will gracefully shut down the virtual machine and stop charging you for the VM. That's all there is to it. I hope you found this informative and thanks for watching.